Hi, is this Chip? Yes, it is. Hey, Chip, this is Drew Fisher. We spoke yesterday about the 14-inch Rikon. Yeah, Drew. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know I've decided to go ahead and pick that up, and I can be at your location probably in about a half hour, maybe maybe an hour. Sounds great. I'll, I'll have it set aside for you. Great. Hey, thanks a lot, Chip. We'll see you soon. Great. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, folks. Well, out with the old, in with the new. This is my new acquisition. It's a Rikon 14-inch bandsaw. It's model 10324. And in this video, I want to get this thing unboxed, set up, talk about its features, and discuss my initial impressions. So, without further ado, let's get busy. So, inside the box, I found three major components. The tabletop, the pieces that comprise the stand, and the bandsaw itself. At first glance, it looked like it was going to be a pretty easy setup, but I definitely needed to consult a manual. I don't know if I lose my man card for that or not, but there are parts of the assembly that were a little tricky. But I was glad to see that the manual didn't just have a setup instructions, but it also had directions on you know how to perform the various adjustments and how to troubleshoot the saw, parts diagrams, maintenance, etc. Now they do include all the tools that you'll need for the installation, however I found it extremely helpful to use a ratchet set instead of the included box wrenches. So speaking of the tools that they include, they give you a little zippered pouch that has some installation hardware, has a couple box wrenches, and then it has four Allen keys for adjustments on the saw. With it just being myself setting this thing up, I had to get a little inventive on how to get the unit up onto the stand. See, in the box, everything weighs about 223 pounds, and by itself, it's 212 pounds. Without the stand and the table, I'm looking at trying to lift about 175 to 180 pounds. Now, I don't know if it was the grease from the hardware, the slick paint job, or the fact that I'm just a big wimp, but I couldn't deadlift this thing up onto the stand. I had to figure out a way to get it a little bit further off the floor for me to get the leverage I needed to lift it up the rest of the way. Now the manual suggests just laying it on the ground uh, for a one-man setup technique, but I really wasn't all that excited about laying the saw down on the concrete on its side and getting it all scuffed up. So once it was up on the stand I bolted down the saw and the two parts got married together. Next up came attaching the tabletop to the trunnion mounts. This was a little tricky because I had to tilt the table 45 degrees to get to two of the mounting holes, but also I needed to leave a little play in the mounting so that there's enough wiggle room for squaring it up to the blade later. Now with the tabletop installed, I put the fence guide bar on with a couple bolts, then the fence and the mounting bracket could be slid onto the bar and there's an optional bolt that can be screwed into the tabletop too that can act as a fence rest when you're not using it. There's a handy little tool holder that gets mounted to the back of the saw which cuts down on the amount of swear words in the shop due to you not being able to find the tool that you're looking for. With everything together it's now time to muscle the saw back into its final resting place. There are holes in the bottom of the stand's legs, no doubt for the option to install lockable casters or to be bolted down onto a mobile stand, which is a great option. But for now, this saw is just going to remain stationary once I get it situated into its new home. Now it's time to make all the necessary adjustments to the saw, including leveling the table and making it square to the blade. I also took time to adjust the fence and make it perfectly parallel to the miter slots in the table as well as exactly 90 degrees from the top. So that's it for the initial assembly and the setup of the bandsaw. Now let's take a quick look at some of the features that it has. Both doors open with just a twist of the knob and open magically by themselves. Actually, there's small springs on the inside, but nevertheless, they open very smoothly and easily. There's a 4-inch dust port on the back of the saw for all of your dust-sucking needs. And the fence slides and locks very smoothly with no wobble at all. If you're not using it, you can store it over on the side of the table. And if you're mad at it, you can slide it all the way off the rail and shove it in a drawer. 
There are small numbers printed on the guide rail that indicate how many mistakes you're bound to make in whatever project you're currently working on. Rikon includes a pivot bar that you can screw onto the fence, and this helps eliminate blade wandering when you resaw or when you have to move a couch up a staircase. Pivot! 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 The guide bar elevation can be changed by spinning the wheel round round baby right round like a record baby right round. <laughs> but seriously, it's so smooth it could be done with just two fingers. There's a 110 volt outlet on the back of the saw for you to plug in your massage chair or your essential oil diffuser for aromatherapy. There's a full set of guide bearings below the table along with a plastic guard. Apparently Rikon thinks too many people have attempted to adjust the guide bearings below the table while the saw is running. Here's another set of guide bearings on top. These can all be micro-adjusted very easily by the knobs on either side. Six fidget spinners died in all the making of these guides. The blade insert apparently has been shot a bunch of times, but still seems to work okay. There's a couple of leveling screws so that you can make it perfectly flat against the table if you need to. Rikon installed two magic buttons on the side of the saw. The blue one seems to make things spin, and the red one makes things quiet. Nobody really knows how they work, they just do. I defeated a troll in battle, and I looted the enchanted golden stick of pushing, and I hang it here on the ultimate bolt of stick holding. If you need to slow down the saw because you're working with wood that isn't that intelligent, then you can do that by loosening the tension of the drive belt by rotating the wheel at the bottom of the saw, moving the belt over to another pulley, and then retightening the tension. If you're super confused at how all this works, there's a goofy diagram of our solar system on the inside of the bottom door that will take your mind off the problem. Similarly to the elastic in my underwear, the life of a bandsaw blade will be shortened if left under tension all the time. This authentic Las Vegas slot machine lever on the back of the saw releases and reapplies a set amount of tension that the blade is under. For example, the country music song that I'm playing on the blade right now can't be heard when I release all of the tension. And since we all enjoy my inspiring musical feats, I can simply retension the blade and go right on back to playing. To manually adjust the tension on the blade, there's a knob on the top of the saw that, when twisted, tells a leprechaun to move a small blade tension needle that can be seen through the window on the top door. Once the needle points to the correct number, just stop turning the knob. You can change the tracking of the blade on the upper wheel by unlocking the adjustment knob on the back of the saw, rotating the wheel, and then looking into the window on the side. If you can't do three things at once, then you're doomed to fail this exercise and you should probably revert to paint by number as your new hobby. Lastly, since the sweeping hamsters kept getting caught up in the drive belt, Rikon mounted a stationary brush to keep sawdust from building up between the blade and the tire of the bottom wheel. So how smooth does this thing run? I set up my dial indicator against the table of the saw. With the saw running at its fastest speed, it was only causing the indicator to fluctuate one thousandth of an inch. This is amazing when compared to my previous saw. It runs so smoothly that I could do this. I balanced a nickel on the tabletop and then turned on the saw. It remained balanced even during the spin up of the motor. Now it's time to give the saw its inaugural cut. I decide to resaw a small piece of cedar. Virtually all of the dust was pulled down through the perforated insert. I move the fence out of the way, unlock and lower the guide post, and then cross cut the end off. It really and truly cut like a dream. Well, there you have it folks, the 14 inch bandsaw from Rikon. My initial impressions are very positive. Everything about this saw screams high end. Now, Rikon does make a couple more bandsaws which are above and beyond this one, but for the features and the price point that you find here, you're just not going to find a better buy. Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was uh, informative and maybe even funny. And who knows, maybe I even helped you in your search for your next bandsaw. If you're brand new to the channel, uh, be sure to click that subscribe button, like, and hey, leave me a comment. All right, and we'll see you next time. Take care.